Hi there, and um, welcome. Uh, my name's uh, Paul Lake. I'm the founder of Next Level Business. Um, we just completed all of our furlough claims, so I've documented what I've learned and sharing that with um, businesses and accountants so you can see how to go through the furlough claim process. A um, couple of things, uh, watch outs before we start. Um, for businesses, uh, if you're going to be claiming Watch out, make sure you prepare all the information uh, before you start. It's a long 25 plus screen process. So get all the information together in one place before you start uh, and in a good format so you can copy and paste. It is a manual job to get the information into the claim portal. So make sure you've got everything uh, in one place to do that. Um, second thing for businesses just to watch out on is some of the calculations, particularly where you're prorating. Um, so you might have an employee that's uh, joined you mid-month or been furloughed mid-month or any of those sort of pro-rate scenarios um, and anybody that's getting variable pay, so anybody where the, uh, the pay varies, they can be quite complex uh, calculations um, and need additional information to be able to calculate them. So, for example, the last year's average variable pay, etc. So seek professional help if you need it. Don't try to um, uh, make the complex calculations uh, yourself if it's um, if it's if it's beyond what you are um, able to do. Um, third thing, make sure you've got all the references, um, ensure you've got the uh, correct uh, UTR and employer national insurance references um, all there and ready to go in the uh, in, in your uh, in your claim and in your portal. Sometimes uh, business owners don't have those to hand so make sure you've got all of that. For accountants and agents, um, you will need to make sure you've got a 648 agent authorization in place to make the claim in your agent portal. It does work, um, which is great, um, but you do need that in place. Otherwise, the only other alternative is to go through the government gateway account of the client and get them to do it, which means passing information back to them. Um, it is manual, so typing in all the details. Uh, I've uh, got slightly um, bruised fingers uh, this morning, as have the rest of the team from, uh, from, from doing that. Um, it is a manual job. There isn't any particularly quick way of, of doing it for a client. Um, I would estimate that you're talking, um, you know, 15, 20 minutes for a simple client with a few employees, upwards of uh, double that for uh, any decent amount of uh, employees on there. So it could take you between 15 and 30 minutes, I estimate, per client to go through and actually enter the details and that's before you've done any calculations at all so you know it could be a couple of hours per client if uh, you've got to do all the calculations and various other things in there so quite a time consumer unfortunately um, watch out for leading zeros on bank sort codes and account numbers when you're inputting that um, our, our tool of choice excel loves to scrub out the leading zero which causes a uh, an issue when you're copying and pasting so make sure you just format that cell accordingly you will need and this is the big a big thing that kind of uh, caused us some pain this morning um you will need the address where the bank statements go for your client uh now for us certainly that wasn't always the registered office it wasn't uh you know their um, flexi workspace or whatever it could be the director's home address we don't track that by and large so you do need to make sure you've got the uh the account details correct that's going to be an anti-fraud measure they're going to look at the bank uh you know the bank account uh, uh sort code bank uh does it match the name and does it match the uh address to make sure that the bank is uh is verifiable that that causes some pain this morning um, to get that information. So go back to your client and get that if you're not sure. Um, payment, it can't be paid into an agent account or a client account. If you've got that, it needs to go directly to the claimable uh, client. And uh, you do have to uh, confirm that when you're uh, making the claim that uh, employees must have either been already paid or will get paid um, to, uh, to, to, to make the claim. So HMRC trying to make sure that um, obviously um, that employees get what they're due. Um, sign off. Just think about uh, procedure on this. I don't need to um, uh, lecture that to accountants, but did you get uh, you know authorization for the claim from your client? Make sure you you, you have got that. And audit uh, HMRC are saying five years um, audit window. Keep everything is the uh, is the advice. So um, getting into kind of quick bit about the HMRC guidance. Here are the three main things that we've looked at. Um, the guidance, which is on that link. Uh, there on the screen that was updated as recently as Friday the 17th of April so 
the day before, the working day before the portal opened. That had some additional guidance in it around prorating and how HMRC expects you to prorate. That was different to how we had originally done some uh, prorating calculations. So we had to go and revise our calculations to be in line with the scheme. Um, so uh, do read everything on, on, on there. That is the kind of uh, the gospel uh, as far as we understand it to be. They've uh, very helpfully released a calculator, but only on Friday. Um, the link to the calculator is there. A um, bit disappointing, I uh, have to say, that the calculator uh, really only performs the basic and it can't do uh, variable pay. You just get a very nice uh, uh, window that says we're unable to do this calculation currently. I would thought that um, they, you know, some, some brain somewhere in HMRC would have been able to work that out. Uh, we built it, so I don't see why HMRC couldn't have built it. Um, and then there is a employer's guide uh, at the bottom. Um, again, this is probably not for the employer because it's quite calc heavy. So if you've got a client that's not particularly um, numbers orientated, that may be a challenge for the employer. Um, but certainly we've tested some of our um, calculations against the calculator and uh, where the calculator can do the same ones we have. Um, we've uh, we've sort of matched it off, if you like, um, to make sure we're not over or, or potentially even under claiming. Uh, on there. So they're the three things uh, to look at. Um, what did it look like? Well, actually, if you're a business or you're an accountant, um, then you actually need to get to the, uh, the, <laughs> the place where you can claim the, uh, the uh, coronavirus uh, business uh, job, job retention scheme uh, money and make this statement. It's not actually all that obvious because when you come onto the home page, uh, you will see uh, lots of information that takes you off to other places on the HMRC website. And actually what you need to do is get into the filing system. So um, the quickest way, if you're in a business portal, is to click on something like the annual statements and payment record. That will take you to a page. And then down the right hand side, you've got this uh, PAYE for employers kind of message um, on, uh, you know, on, on there. Uh, and you can kind of start to, um, you know, start to see where you need to click. The, the place you need to click is the file returns and forms bit. So just sort of middle of that right hand side column uh, there. If you click on that, then you'll then go through to the uh, uh, file returns and forms summary page and you'll see the coronavirus job retention scheme clicked there. So uh, I don't know why it's buried so deeply. Um, it doesn't need to be. It could have been one click from the home page, but there we go. Um, so that's where you need to click the uh, CJRS scheme, uh, click there, and then you're starting to get closer to the truth. So we're still clicking at this point. Then you're finding the um, the main uh, main job retention scheme uh, sort of homepage, and you want to click the access the uh, access the scheme button that I've highlighted in red there. Still clicking. Um, now we can get to the start of our claim. So read all of that good stuff before you make the claim. Um, uh, note here that. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you're saying that the claim has been made in line with HMRC's published uh, guidance, and that was updated on Friday. So actually, uh, you may have done your calculations last week or doing them on the fly. Make sure it's in line with that. Um, I don't know how fussy they're going to be about um, getting it down to the penny or the pound, but um, potentially there's uh, there's an element of risk uh, there as well. And it just goes through the normal um, caveats that you would expect to see. So accept and continue. You're then going through and saying, yes, uh, you have furloughed it, uh, an employee, because of COVID-19. So lots of um, lots of pages on here that are um, getting you to confirm what you've done and why you've done it. Um, so you're going to click yes to that if you're making a claim. Um, you'll be uh, having to confirm that you're paying the full amount to employees. So again, this is another anti-avoidance measure by HMRC, just getting you to confirm all of this. So uh, I guess uh, you're clicking yes. The issue I think you've got here for um, accountants and agencies, we don't often control the payments. So uh, you're, um, you're very much hoping your client does what they uh, you should be uh, doing um, in that. Um, so you can click continue. Um, does the employer submit a company tax return? If yes, um, then you, it's obviously a company. If you click no, uh, it will um, ask you for different references, basically your tax reference for your um, for the employer that uh, that is going. In our case, it was all limited companies, so we clicked yes. You're inputting your corporation tax reference here. If you're a, a, a 
sole trader, um, self-employed uh, person, you'll be putting in your personal UTR number in here. Either way, it's, it's going to be a UTR input into that. Again, clicking um, name of the employer. So again, that will be either your limited company or your sole tradership or whoever's the employee, uh, the name on the uh, employer record um, into, uh, into there. Um, this is just some additional information section. So again, we're continuing to click through. So you can see this isn't a super quick uh, process, um, but it's basically saying we're going into the claim section now. Um, we need to input a claim period. So whether you're doing monthly, you might be backdating to the 1st of March, whatever you're, whatever you're claiming for. You need to put the dates, the relevant dates uh, in here. Again, all manual. Um, you're going to confirm the claim period or change it. Um, so there's lots of error checking in in this uh, you know in this uh, plodding um, you know form that you would go through. Uh, I think it's mainly to um, make sure that uh, everybody's looking at it um, several several times and confirming. Um, you're going to need to input how many employees you have uh, furloughed and how many you're claiming for in here. If you input more than um, more than a hundred, um, you get the option to upload via CSV. For the majority of payrolls, you'll just be inputting a number below a hundred, and therefore you'll be adding them manually, unfortunately, in this form. Um, so uh, in this uh, instance, it was just a one employee example, so it'll ask you uh, to confirm that. And then for each employee, you'll need to put in what you're claiming for the gross furlough pay. Um, again. All of the proration calculations need to be done, so make sure you're uh, on top of uh, on top of that, including the variable pay. So you put an amount in for the pay into that box. The next box is employer national insurance that you're claiming. Again, uh, you need to make sure your counts are uh, spot on for uh, for that. And again, on the pension contributions, making sure that the pension is in line with the guidance, which uh, if you haven't already read it, is the um, is the statutory minimum, not whatever they're currently uh, paying. So the 3% and qualifying earnings. So um, be very careful on the qualifying earnings uh, proration caps if you're doing it um, business or, or accountant. It can uh, it can quite easily uh, get go wrong. Um, you'll need to keep doing this. So these sorts of screens will reappear for every employee that you need to claim. So this is, in my view, bonkers because you're going to have to do this for 50, 60 people on a, on a payroll. Um, you can't upload a CSV file. I don't know why that wouldn't be available for everybody rather than just the 100 plus. It would save an enormous amount of time. Um, so, yeah, 50, 60, 70 people inputting three amounts per employee um, and going through and, and confirming what you've, uh, what you've input for each employee then their full name, then their national insurance number and the payroll number, which is optional. Um, putting all of that in and going around the houses, um, you know, 50 or 60 times potentially, uh, you know, can take a bit of uh, a bit of time. Um, as long as you've got the data in the right order, I think it's fairly straightforward, but um, it does just take, um, take a little bit of time and um, best to go carefully uh, and, uh, and accurately. On, uh, on that so you've got a number three three different numbers against each employee so if you've got 50 employees then you've got 150 uh, claim amounts that you're putting in per employee so this is starting to get big if you've got a, um, a large number of employees lots of data points to make sure you've got them uh, got them right um, once you've inputted the employee information it'll ask you to confirm that again so you can eyeball that and confirm um, and uh, then you're at this point where you've added that single employee in this example. You're going to do that again for the number two, three, four, all the way to 99. If you're um, unfortunate in the sense of your payroll is, is 99 and not 100 so that you could do it by CSV file. Um, so you've got all of those uh, employees added and all of those claim points in there. Um, now you need to work out where the money's going. So uh, for a lot of businesses, I hope this is a business bank account um, and uh, you, you'll be able to click on uh, on that. Um, it'll ask you for the sort code account number um, or building society role number if, if it's a building society of where you want it to go. Again, um, it will, we've, we've tested it. If you don't put in six digits for the sort code, it does kick you out and say no. So there's a, a small amount of error checking in here. Um, but um, leading zeros and things, um, be careful. 
uh, because this is uh, this is where the money's going, and I suspect if it goes to the wrong bank account or the wrong place, it'll be extremely difficult to uh, sort sort out. So uh, get this uh, get this right. Um, this is the bit that uh, that caused us some um, some angst uh, this morning, um, which is find the address associated with the employer's bank account. So that isn't a statutory address. That's not. Uh, anywhere. If you're a business owner, I'm sure you know where your statements go. You can put that in there. If you're an accountant, you don't always know exactly the address that uh, the statements go to. Sometimes it's that registered office. Sometimes it's your office. Sometimes it's a flexi workspace, the director's home address. Who knows? That will need clarifying, um, especially if payments get held up because the postcode doesn't match the um, the bank records on error checking that HMRC are doing. So, um, you got to find that and input those addresses. Um, so far, we haven't had any issues with inputting the addresses when they've been uh, right. Um, but once you input that, it'll ask you to confirm the address. It'll show you that and ask you to confirm again. And then who should uh, who should be contacted about the claim? In our case, as an accountant, we put our, our client down um, in terms of their name and telephone number, which we've uh, collated. Um, I would probably suggest you do the same, otherwise you'll be inundated with a lot of uh, potential calls to clarify things that you may not be able to clarify. So in our case, we've chosen to make a, uh, a director of the client a the main contact in, in there. Um, and then once you've got to that point, you've inputted everything the, uh, the claim form is asking you to input, it will summarise everything for you at the end. Um, that you put in, including the uh, details, uh, and it will ask you to make the declaration. So this is the um, the bit uh, if you're an accountant, or uh, the uh, the the thing that you need to be confident about if you're a uh, you're a business. Um, so it's basically saying uh, that you're going to be claiming costs in line with the scheme. Um, it's in line with the guidance. Uh, everything you've um, entered is is correct. So this is the bit where. You know, if it's not right, you're, you're potentially going to find yourself uh, either not having a claim, so it'll be held up or refused by HMRC because bits of information don't match. Um, or later on down the line, if it does go through, um, this is where they'll come back and audit uh, audit you or uh, in some way uh, challenge the claim later later on, which will be, um, you know, I'm sure in, uh, you know, in a few years time. So uh, be conscious you are uh, at this point submitting a declaration to HMRC on the use of the scheme. Once you've done that, you will get a claim reference. This is super important. Screenshot it and write it down. Business or accountant, screenshot and write that claim reference down. Um, and and hopefully the claim reference doesn't sort of have a PAYE reference in it or anything else. Um, you can see there just below the green box, there's a PAYE scheme reference um, there. But um, we've uh, we've taken to kind of adding a claim reference to our furlough trackers so that we can pop that up at any point. Um, but for each claim you do, you will have a claim reference. Um, and uh, I, I su suggest that'll be the only thing that you actually get from HMRC to prove that you've made a claim. Now, from this point onwards, they are saying six working days. Um, this is what's on the uh, screen below it. Six working days to make that payment. So um, for those that got their claim in on the 20th today, the start very start of the scheme, um, you are looking for payment early next week. Now, I do see that as an issue. A lot of businesses have a payday on the 25th. That is this Saturday. So if six working days from now um, is the fastest, and we were in on the crack of dawn uh, this morning doing this, um, then it won't arrive for payday either this Friday, which is normal to pay slightly ahead of the um, 25th Saturday, or it won't arrive for the 25th. It'll be arriving at best um, Monday next week or Tuesday if they um, if they need uh, the full number of working days. So in that case, you've got um, potentially payroll uh, payroll uh, needing to be paid um, prior to the uh, the claim money coming in. But you'll have to look at that on a case by case basis. At this point, you've done your claim, so it's all uh, it's all good. Um, if you would like a copy of these uh, slides, uh, please do get in touch. I'm sure we can. Uh, send those out whether you're a business or an accountant. Thanks very much and all the best with your uh, claims. Good luck.